In the late 1960s, the East Los Angeles movement to win civil rights for Chicanos was not just waged on the streets and in the schools. It was fought with paintbrushes and by poems, waged through the lenses of cameras, through Campesino Theater, in the open air, and through the distinctive rock riffs coming out of garages in East LA. It was art, but it was also equality, justice, and identity. Chicana art put into words and pictures into images and in music, the power of the once muted voices and faces of East LA. Chicano art validates our existence. It also represented uh, cultural icons that were important to our community, historic figures, uh, our heroes, our leaders. There are depictions of our indigenous past. It's art that's part of our struggle, our civil rights struggle. This was 1968 when the walkouts happened, and that year was a year when America sort of blew up. Because today was a day of history for all of America. You know, there were assassinations of, of, of Martin Luther King, Robert Kennedy. We had riots in Chicago with the police and uh, people who were attending the Democratic Convention. We had a disproportionate number of uh, Chicano youth going into the Vietnam War. People were coming back in body bags. All of this basically moved uh, people towards social protest, towards saying this, this is enough. The seeds were already there, planted decades before by Mexico's renowned muralists Rivera, Orozco, and Siqueiros. Over time, Chicano art collectives, organizations, and artists blossomed in East LA, creating and illustrating Chicanismo, the meaning of being Chicano, their cultural renaissance rechanneled the history of art in LA and added a new voice to the world of art. Here's this art coming out of this community that was, you know, treated with inequality for generations. But this art comes out, the art is, is a form of triumph. It speaks to the spirit. It's beyond words. That's why we, we want to look at it and experience it. Of the many names and groups and spaces of those formative years, we celebrate six of them here now. The first Chicano arts organization in East LA was Goez Art Studios and Gallery. It was founded by Jose Luis Gonzalez, his brother Johnny, and David Botello. Goez contributed greatly to LA's reputation as the mural capital of the world, creating, directing, and restoring hundreds of LA's most prominent works. Internationally recognized Goez use multiple strategies to advocate for Chicano art, beautifying communities, creating the first Chicano art school, launching mural tours of Chicano landmarks, and providing a place and space for Chicano art exhibitions. Self-Help Graphics and Art was founded by Sister Karen Bocalero, Carlos Bueno, and Antonio Ibanez. In most cities, people have to come to the art. Self-Help Graphics took art to the people, converting a van into a cultural center on wheels. Over the years, the community center has been acknowledged as a place that incubates and generates artists in innovative printmaking techniques. And through exhibitions and educational programs that have taken the images and influences of Chicano art far beyond East LA into the global world. It wouldn't be an art movement if it didn't have its own dissidents, and OSCO put itself at aesthetic odds with it. The self-taught avant-garde founding members were Harry Gamboa Jr., Gronk, Willie Heron III, and Patsy Valdez. The OSCO Quartet, rooted in political protest, was in your face and in the streets, on film and on the walls. OSCO's defining moment came in 1972 when its members tagged their names on LACMA for the museum's categorical exclusion of Chicano art. Since then, their works have been staged nationally and internationally, including at LACMA in 2011. Los Four was another seminal and influential early art collective. This one was founded by political activists Carlos Almaraz, Roberto de la Rocha, Gilbert Magoo Luján, and Frank Romero. The group was later joined by Judith Hernandez. In 1974, two years after OSCO's tagging protest, Los Four made history, collectively and individually, by becoming the first Chicanos to show their work at a major public museum, LACMA. The groundbreaking show introduced mainstream audiences to Chicano artists, 
and in the world of European American art, stamped that work as important and legitimate. Two muralists founded the legendary public art studio, East Los Streetscapers, David Botheo and Wayne Healy. They were later joined by associate artists, including George Yepes. Dozens of the group's works have adorned East LA and later throughout the US. Works rich in myth and fact, history and present, including real Chicano barrio life, culture and heritage. East Los Streetscapers transcended the dispiriting and self-defeating cliches and made their paint into the stuff of hope and pride in a city that had credited Chicanos with neither. Spark was the brainchild of three women, Donna Deitch, Christina Schlesinger, and its artistic director, Judith Baca. My name is Judith Francisca Baca. I started painting murals because I realized that when I was 23 that I had never seen a Chicana in a museum. Spark's Great Wall of Los Angeles, which tells the California stories of those forgotten, remains one of the city's most famous murals and the world's longest, a half mile of artwork crafted by gang members and at-risk kids. In the years since, hundreds of young artists have emerged from Spark's training, and Spark's lobbying has helped to preserve murals and other public artworks across Los Angeles. It took decades, but over time, the artworks of renegades and rebels became important, and then famous, and then valuable. Early collectors with a cultivated eye began finding and buying the art, Actor and comedian Cheech Marin was among the earliest of them. I'd been studying art all my life since I was 10 years old. So when I saw these painters, I knew what good painting was. And wow, these, these guys can really paint. It's like hearing a, a great jazz musician, you know, you don't have to understand it, you just have to feel it. In 2002, Marin sparked the next big breakthrough when he sent his personal collection of Chicana art on a 12-city, five-year tour of the nation's major art museums. Chicano Visions, American painters on the verge, introduced Chicano art to the rest of the country. The works by 26 Chicano artists broke attendance records and started a conversation about Chicano art that is still happening. I think what he has done and probably only he could do, is to take his celebrity and use it to shine a light on Chicano arts. And what he's done is ex exposed a lot of people, particularly younger generations, to this art so they can see, learn, what, what's it all about? Why, why is Chicano art special? Today, Marin is an acknowledged champion and advocate of the genre, owning the finest and largest collection of Chicano art in the U.S. A new museum will soon bear his name in Riverside, California, and will serve as the only center in the world dedicated to showcasing the vivid richness of Chicano artistic endeavors. For him to do what he's doing, it takes a, a lot of guts. It takes a lot of perseverance. He's helping our community make a mark in, in the world of culture. And it's something that's gonna be there and stay there. It's, it's a heavy lift and he's done it. Then in 2017 and 2018, the Getty's second and historic PST looked deeply into the entwined history of art in LA and Latin America. Its 80 exhibitions drew nearly three million visitors, two thirds of them local. La Plaza was an important part of the exhibition with its partnership of Murales Rebeldes, Chicano murals under siege, presented in conjunction with the California Historical Society. One of our goals in doing this whole thing was to create a legacy of scholarship, to build knowledge about all of these types of art. Some of the shows are traveling, so that will build the artist's reputation too. The Getty is also committed to building future generations of art leaders through its multicultural undergraduate internship program. Since 1993, the Art Center has supported more than 3,000 interns who've worked at 70 cultural organizations in LA, La Plaza being one of them. Some of them now are actually leading some of those organizations, or they're in important positions. Well, the Getty is committed deeply to our to Los Angeles, our home city, like the conservation of the Sequeiros mural that the Getty Conservation Institute did. Through these initiatives and more, the Getty has changed the art world forever. There's no turning back at this point. And I can already see the after effects. You can see there are more job postings in the field, 
Um, there's more interest among curators and museums in exhibiting Latino art, but I'm hopeful for the future. Like so many emerging art movements before it, Chicano art is still finding its place as a global force, yet its influence and reach are still growing, especially among young artists who are inspired by the revolutionary and brave creators who came before them. So yes, it, it, more recognition, more understanding, it'll happen. But it, it's fascinating work. And you look at it, every painting, every piece, every work, it has a story. Tonight, we honor the men and women who brought this movement to life. We honor those who have given it nourishment and shared it with the world. Unidos en la lucha, no nos moverán. Unidos en la lucha, no nos moverán como un árbol. Firme junto al río, no nos